You are about to witness a tale of a recent character who will go through traits and trials. One who will accomplish the impossible challenges. And will he be able to break it through and last this new life? Present to you the newest egg boss, Lightning Links, in this new tale that is about to be told. Yeah, guys! If you couldn't tell by that, let's just say I read this and I was like, oh my god, Lightning is back and he's an egg boss! That is so awesome! And again, Danny did do a um, egg boss design for him, which I will put a link in the description below so that you guys can see what he'll look like. But yeah, I pretty much was, when I first read this, I was like, oh my god, lightning is back! Because, well, pretty much, uh, let's just say, <laughs> pretty much you could say a couple months ago, I didn't really care for him, about him that much, but then... After what I was looking through and actually learning about this guy, I was like, Oh my gosh, this guy is awesome! And you just feel bad for the guy. I mean, seriously, he went through a lot, and they pretty much couldn't use him. Oh, Archie, why would you give him up? I mean, I know he was part of the Destructix and part of Scourge's crew and all, but come on. I mean, if... He wasn't a Pender's character, so they could have used him. I mean, just a thought. He would have actually been in the reboot, and he would have been like a separate egg boss or something. Then again, I think he would have started off as a thief or something, and then he got required to be in the Eggman Empire. I don't know, that's literally what I got. But yeah. Oh, man. Well... This is chapter one of New Guy. That's literally the name of the title of this. But anyways, let's begin, shall we? <clears throat> Security cameras with their dim lights illuminated the darkened room of the Egg Army's prison facility. The prison was hidden from all stables of GUN scanners and Freedom Fighter Intelligence. The Egg Prison, as many call it, is a mix is a maximum security jail complete with cells, integration rooms, torture chambers, and brainwashing facility. The complex was exclusively built underground so that prisoners have lesser chance of escaping back to civilization if they had ever made it back to the surface with their sanity. Every week, a new group of leaders would be selected to take charge of what, of watch duty, perf perfumatively from the egg boss ranks. Teams of three are drawn at random and placed at the main desks of security at night watch. Okay, two things. One, this was the no zone jail prison zone to pretty much seem it like it was like a playground or something. And secondly, so is like pretty much drawing the uh, egg bosses at random, like drawing random names out of a hat. And thirdly, yeah, because this worked so well before with Eggman's Dozen, guys. Anyways, also, uh, Night Watch. Huh, suddenly I'm starting to get the idea of a uh, FNAF crossover. Yeah, seriously, I would definitely like to see what the egg bosses would look like if they were taking a job like that. But I guess we would get different reactions. Dr. Eggman's idea of team bonding and strategy building. The job may be exaggeration and or tough, but it is a real pain and tiresome chore. Nothing exciting ever happens since most of the prisoners are processed a process truly 
before being released into the egg army or to take wherever they are needed. They haven't been receiving a lot of over the past six months, leaving the majority of the cells empty or quiet. Within the main surveillance room stood a large purple walrus in a light blue attire. Tundra! <laughs> Let's just say, Tundra's one of those characters I actually kind of feel bad for, but at the same time, I would like to see more because, well, come on, the big guy, he really deserves a little more, well, a little more love. I mean, seriously, I mean, sure, what he did was uncalled for, but... Let's be honest here, the guy pretty much went through a lot. And I feel pretty bad for him. <sighs> Shame he was rushed. Also, pretty much, his name was Sherman in the older comics. No, kidding, they actually mentioned about um, Roder's dad, and his name was uh, Sherman, so yeah. And I made a little comic about a <laughs> Aqua finding that out, and he's just like, Your name is Sherman? Yes, Sherman is my real name. And then I did the little Spongebob thing, and, you know, the joke about uh, Sheldon and all. <laughs> I'm sure if you guys remembered that episode, you probably remember that joke, or you probably know it. <laughs> Standing several feet away from him was a black orca wearing a yellow uniform, pacing the room. Or pacing the floor. The orca groans in frustration. Awkward! My boy, awkward! <laughs> yeah, if you can tell, I love this orca. He's just awesome. He's like in the top five of my favorite egg bosses. He's just awesome. Sure, he's a jerk, but I like him. Because, come on, can you really go wrong with an orca? Sure, I don't like how he messes with Tundra, but... Hey, the guy can hold his own, and yeah, he's interesting. He's like a unique kind of egg boss in a way. Why are we doing this BS? There. No, wait, that's, that was more Tundra. Why are we doing this bullshit? This is literally nothing to be, there's literally nothing to be done here. A few of the guards shriveled up, hearing the, his brash tone echo off the metal. Well, it is a prison after all, it wouldn't be quiet. They tried their best to continue scrolling through the countless cameras in the facility. Yeah, you don't want to be around the orca and walrus, especially if they're in the same room together. It's gonna be bloody. The walrus spoke up. For, for so-called wager of war, you certainly haven't learned the concept of patience. He responds with a calm and stern voice. Besides, there was a new batch of prisoners sent here two days ago. Maybe they can cause some trouble for you, Auklut, if you are so short-tempered. Tundra smirked, feeling proud of his comment. Usually it's Auklut who starts that type of conversation. I mean, seriously, Auklut always wants to fight, and he's the one who always seems to get on... Tundra's nerves, but it's the other way around, so <laughs> yay, Tundra, you just got awesome. You give Aqua a taste of his own medicine. <laughs> but he's not gonna fight him, it's just that he's sure just getting him back is like, yes, you did the same to me. I think it only seems fair that I do the same to you. Comrade. Rrr, shut up, Sherman. <laughs> I'm sorry. And hearing the growls of his enemy, he couldn't touch him unless he wanted to get wanted to be locked up for a year or so. I'll show you, tempered old man! The orca roared, grabbing his blue coat and, a, and was about to punch him, the old walrus. But a female voice over the communicator made them freeze. Or halt. Whichever. Will you guys stop it? Just because I'm not in the room, it still doesn't mean I won't come back there and blow a cap in on both. On you both. Knock it off. She said with an 
aggressive yet settling voice before hanging up. All Club released his grip on Tundra's coat and backed away. The two sat down at their seats and kept an eye on the other workers and the security footage. Yeah, settle down, you two. We don't want any arguments and we don't need any outbreaking fights. <sighs> and it's hard to believe that in another universe they would actually be good friends. Just saying. Three hours later, head passed. Still no sign of any developing. A few of the guards were making their rounds about the cell about the cell blocks. A couple made small talk as they went around the facility. Man, I thought this job would be a lot more productive. One of the men complained as they checked the empty cells. As long as that, it's not on the battlefield, I'm not complaining. The other said in a sluggish tone. As the two made their way to cells 425 to 450, they noticed one of the cells... Cell doors left the jar. Odd. That doesn't look right. One of the guards went to investigate. Better report this back to HQ. The soldier turned on his communicator, sending a notification to the main security desk. Um, sir, one of the cell doors were left open. Was there a prisoner in cell 438? Tundra sat up when he heard the call. Look through the files. Look through the files. He tirely told one of the catalogers to check. He wasn't thinking it would be something serious. Maybe someone just let the cell open on mistake. Or it was just a prank being pulled by one of the guards. Because you know, Tundra, you're not really a guy of humor. Um... The records say there were supposed to be a male links in the cell, sir. All prisoners should be in the, for curfew. Oh my god, lightning! Yes! Lightning, he's basically here. Well, then again, they did state that he was captured. How did he get captured in the first place is beyond me. Because it feels as though that he'd be a lot harder to catch. Since, you know, he's a ninja and all. The walrus became suspicious and had a warning sent out for the area. The orca overheard the minute dilemma on the other side of the room. Finally, something interesting to do. The orca remarked as he got up to see the records on the prisoner. He's fairly new. Came in three months ago. Has been undergoing the reinforcement process. Still got some of that fire running. Okay, I'm starting to get reminded slightly of that one scene with Spirit and how they try to break him. Uh, you know, it's that horse movie and there was these um guys and yeah, let's just say it's kind of like that. I don't know why, but it feels like that. The orca seemed to approve of this mysterious Lynx's ability and how he lasted for so long un under intense conditions. The whole area was silent for another half hour until a red alert was triggered in cell block C. Soldiers reported an inmate had escaped matching the description of the missing inmate from cell 438. Tundra and Aqua took the alert seriously and bolted out of the room to take care of the inmate. When entering the cell block, guards were scattered unconscious and seriously injured upon the floor. Well, you wanted some action. Now you have it. The wall was set as the two traced the trail of bodies. Maybe this guy can put up a challenge for once. After circling the outer halls of the cell of the cell block C, Auclet could sense movement near one of the emergency exits and rage and redirected the walrus to check the extra 
extent location. I find it kind of funny how these two were actually being uh, teamed up again. Then again, uh, it's Eggman. What do you expect? Also, it's actually kind of ironic the fact that Aqua could actually tell that there's moving around even though he's not in water. Because if you must know, orcas can actually detect things rather easily with sonar. Eh, maybe Aqua can do that on, on land too. After all, he is a walking whale after all. <laughs> I'm sure pretty much people who study extinct animals would probably get that reference. When they arrive, they see the male lynx trying to pry open the sealed door. The orca smirked and slowly walked up to the lynx. Mm. Oh boy. Sorry. So, here's our missing kitten. Okay, that sounds kind of creepy when you say it like that. Then again, it's me, so I probably should be not surprised. He spoke with a menacing, twisted glee, twist of glee in his voice. The lynx slowly turned to face the two egg bosses. His, cobalt, his light cobalt eyes expressing a silent death threat. His brow furrowed matching his inner emotion. And his canines are bared. Okay, seriously? Shouldn't that be counted as cat nines? I don't get it. He's not a dog or anything. And ready to pierce. Tundra took the unspoken threat seriously as he was preparing to freeze him on the spot if necessary. Yeah, unlike Aqua, Tundra, he is actually restrained. I mean, he is restraining to uh, do some serious damage. At least he has some standards, so give him that. He This actually proves that Tundra is a lot less likely to um, cause any death. <coughs> so yeah, good props, Tundra. Good props. The orca didn't care, though. He just wanted to do something more productive and entertaining. Aqua cracked his knuckles and immediately charged at the lynx at full force. The feline inmate waited until the last second to move out of the way and charged at the walrus. He hissed at Tundra, bringing out his razor blade claws. The old walrus simply put up his arms in defense, letting the lynx claw through the thick fabric. Okay! Um, walruses, they have very thick hides, so this shouldn't really cause them too much damage. Tundra didn't wish to hurt him. His job was to only capture the inmate with mineral damage. The lynx constantly tried to claw at his vitals, but the walrus continued to dodge and deflect the lynx's attacks. But it started to become difficult for Tundra. The lynx was swift and quick to recover, managing to claw his, white, his right cheek. Aqua then took him from behind. Oh boy, don't put in new angels, guys! Separating the walrus from the deranged inmate. Tundra took out his comb link to call for backup. We found the missing inmate. Need backup at cell block C's emergencies exit 7. The lynx knew th this was now or never. His only escape was several feet away from him. He pulled out a kunai and stabbed the orca in the arm. Aqua screamed in pain as he released the lynx from his grip. He once again charged at the walrus with his blade ready to silence him. Tundra wasted no time in backhand. Oh! Beach slap! You know, B-E-A-C-H. Okay? Beach. Jeez, Tundra! I didn't think he'd have a pimp slap. Get props, Sim. The lynx knocking him against the wall. 
Just before the Lynx could try and strike again, the Orca pulled out his trump card. Oh no, I don't know where this is going. He unleashed his mind sonar attack, causing the Lynx to become confused and disoriented. He lands his hands over his ears, trying to block out the booming sounds against his eardrums. Ouch! First off, Orcas are pretty loud when they use that. And secondly, a Lynx's hearing is definitely very keen. So yeah, that's going to cause some serious damage. A searing voice in his head screamed at him to surrender. The Lynx bared his barely showed signs of freely surrendering. He still was fighting with everything he had left. This one has proven to be too much trouble. Let's make this a little more interesting. Aqua grinned as he let out another burst of sonar in full force. I'm trying to make it sound like a sonar, guys. Just bear with me on this. The Lynx screamed in agony as the new command was sent out. He slowly took out the blade from earlier and brought it to his throat. What are you doing? Tundra exclaimed in horror as he knew what he was going to make the inmate do. He's tough. This should break him more effectively. The orca said in twisted glee as the blade came closer and closer to the Lynx's throat. The walrus could tell he was still trying to fight back, but it wasn't enough. Just before Auklut could let out the command to make the cut, a loud bang rang through the hall and knocked the blade out of the lynx's grip. The two were disbelieved. Impossible. Who dared to? The orca could, was cut off when he felt a strange cold metal tube being placed on his neck. He looked down to see a light blue pistol with golden gears pointed directly at his throat, leaving the orca baffled. Release him. All right, Danny! Yes, it's Danny. <laughs> oh, man. Just, just good timing, girl. A cool threatened tone came from the wielder of the weapon. Light blue fox with black marks upon her muzzle, tail, and ears stood before him. Her dark hazel hair cascaded her facial features, hiding everything but a faint glow of red underneath her bangs. Because if you must remember, she does have robotic eyes slightly, or at least one robotic eye at least. <sighs> Sorry, guys. Aqua recognized the blue fox due to her dark bl navy blue uniform. She was an egg boss like him, the very one who was assigned along with the two. The orca released the lynx from his control, letting him drop to his knees, groaning. The fox took the weapon away and activated the, the serodic gears on her pistol. She slowly approached the lynx that was still on the ground and knelt down. Using the gun, she lifted his chin up to get a better look at the inmate. The lynx expressed fear as he saw the face of his assumed-to-be next tormentor. Oh, come on. The biggest one who's a tormentor is Auklut. He's a big jerk, for crying out loud. Huh. Maybe that's the reason why they gave him the yellow... That's hard because he's that sour. <laughs> oh. uh -huh. I guess that would make Tundra a blueberry. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm sorry. Fruit puns. Then I guess that would make Danny blue raspberry because it's blue. I don't know. Her one hazel eye expressed a sense of calm and interest, while her robotic eye gave gave an odd, eerie feeling. You have great potential and skill. Skill and potential. Ugh. She spoke in a whisper. 
something his empire needs. You're just doing this because Connie is the only fem the only lynx in the group. That's an egg boss. So it's like Danny's gonna sh secretly ship them. I ship them. <laughs> what? Had to come up somehow. The lynx looked at her in disbelief as she cracked a small smile and helped him up. Get me an escort and a copy of the security footage. I'm sure the doctor will be pleased with what we recovered. The fox said while handcuffing the lynx. <sighs> handcuffing the lynx's hands behind his back. But he is not finished with proceed processing. And jeez, it's really snowy out there. Tundra spoke up as he, as she led them to the shipyard. Don't give me that excuses. I mean, don't give me excuses. The Empire has been going through a decrease in soldiers. The doctor will take whatever he can. Huh. I guess that's how I got involved in the Egg Boss community. Danny, you definitely have a nick for finding people. Just saying. The fox leans closer to the male lynx. And this one shows plenty of promises in the higher ranks. I'm sure once we show the footage, he will forgive our disturbance and absence from the facility. So keep moving. The two can, can argue with her and did what they were told. You're going to take orders from a girl? Wow. Once the prisoner was secured and the footage was handed over to the Ocean Blue Fox, a private ship was sent to the Death Egg. Oh boy. Uh, just a moment, guys. Okay, guys. Within the Death Egg, Dr. Eggman was working on a few badnik hordes for disruption to his other regions across the globe. Three-fourths of the way through, he receives a message from one of his robotic servants. B -b boss one of your egg bosses has come back from their facility duty early. The mad doc slammed his tools down and exclaimed, What is the meaning of this? I placed those three there for a reason. So why aren't they doing their job? Orbot and Cubot jumped back after hearing the doc's Brash tone. I'd be sure these guys had a mighty good reason to ditch boss. Q bot. No, it. Odd Q bot. I'd be sure these guys had a mighty good reason for ditch boss. Yeah, seriously. I, I can't have a. I kind of misread that first, so yeah. Who was it that left their post? Eggman asked as he got out of his chair and went to his main communication desk. It appears to be the Egg Boss Danny and her small squad. She claims to have something you need for the betterment of the Empire's higher ranks. The spear, the spherical robot started bringing up her message and video achievements. The doctor lounged on the chair again. Wiping away the sweat and oil from his brows. Seriously, Eggman has brows? Huh. I don't know what to say to that. So, so it was Danny who left. She'll be arriving here at the base shortly. But this is what she wanted you to see, sir. Orbot played the footage from the prison showing the inmate in question and how he single-handedly took out most of the guards that came across his path. Hmm. Danny always had a knack for finding people who have qualified for the task I need. Pretty much how I got involved, but it was by an accident. But this new level of skill, and I want it. Eggman grinned as he watched the rest of his surveillance. Give Danny permission to land hangar three in hangar three a and meet me in the briefing center
You sure this boy can do the great, do a good job? He looks like a back salmon type that will kill you in your sleep. <laughs> I, I made Cubot sound like pretty much a sergeant. It's like, all right, sir. All right, people. Ted Hut. <laughs> he pretty much has his voice boxes mixed up, guys. That's pretty much kind of the joke with him. So, yeah, just go with it. Cubot asks as the doctor lets his seat to head to the briefing center. He will fall in line. I can assure you that. I needed more eight buses anyway. The three headed there and waited for the blue fox to arrive. <sighs> Sorry. After 20 minutes of waiting, Orban notified the doctor that Danny's transport has arrived and that she was making her way here. Hey, he man dusted himself off and stood up from his seat, waiting for, the, for his egg boss. The door opened and then walked the, the blue fox. Ah, Danny. I have heard of your recent finding in my reflexy. Reflexy. A very brash and delicate young man he is he. Re he is. Since when did Eggman start talking like Yoda? <sighs> Receiving him, you see. <laughs> I'm sorry. The fox politely bowed and said, I heard the ruckus. He uh, it sounded like knights. My bad. I heard the ruckus he was making when I was making my rounds. I had to tend to the other soldiers first, but a few met heads, meatheads, thought it would be funny to torment the poor creature, and hence I stepped in. The two robotic guards walked in with the lynx. He didn't look too well. The orca's attacks took a lot out of him. Oh man, that's poor lightning. Just poor guy. I mean, he was in no zone prison too. And come to think of it, did any of you notice that uh, lightning, he basically had longer hair slightly. It's like... Okay, they gave Scourge a haircut. He's like, okay, your quills are definitely going to have to get shaved a bit. And then, But they didn't do that for lightning? He's like, nah, you're good. Okay, guys, let him in. I don't know why, but I just noticed that, and it was just weird. Oh, well. Go ahead and introduce yourself. No, wait. Go ahead and introduce yourself. The same thing he did for me. The fox kindly whispered to the lynx. He stayed silent for a few minutes until he spoke. My name is Lightning Lynx. His voice sounded harsh and raspy, probably from the constant screaming and lack of fluid. Seriously, how did he survive that long? Jeez, he really is a tough guy just uh just out good boy he was captured a few months ago after he and his gang were trying to raid one of our storehouses i thought he would make a good egg boss sir eggman walked up to lightning inspecting his physics he was strong agile and intelligent how can you tell someone of intelligence that's what I want to know. Hmm. With proper, with the proper development and cybernetics, he can make a fine egg boss. I need more people like him on the field. He leaned down to face the lynx eye to eye. <sighs> Insert song here. What do you say, Lightning? Join my empire or go back to the prison? Oh boy, 
So you either gave up your life to pretty much be in the Empire, or go be tormented till you're nothing more than a mindless puppet. Pick your poison! The tone of the doctor turned sinister as the Lings started to remember everything that happened there. The agonizing beatings, the electric shock therapies, and the constant screams that could break your sanity in minutes. Jeez, like I said, it seems like Nozone was a lot more of a playground than this. Seriously. They had counseling there, so yeah, it seems like Nozone would be a better option. Plus, at least the people actually had, like, I don't know, those special collars on. The Link sighed and tilted his head down in defeat. He refused to go back to that hellhole. I... I recall my freedom to you. No, wait. I recall my freedom to you. The mad doctor grinned and patted his head. Good boy. I think it's obvious that Eggman likes cats. Because it is, he did confirm the fact that he likes cats. Because he does have a cat. Good kitty. Good kitty. And Connie, she's basically a lynx, so yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's awkward. Eggman stood up and pointed in towards the blue fox. Danny, take him to the medical center for treatment and get Ma to equip him with Cybernex. Pronto! The fox bowed. Yes, sir. She signaled the drones to droids to take out the handcuffs and leave. She would take him to the medic. The fox tilted her head and walked out of the room, and the lynx followed. The two arrived into the dimly lit, dimly, seriously, why am I misreading? Lit room filled with strange medical and scientific instruments. Huh, for some reason, it reminds me slightly of Dexter's lab. Paper is perfectly centered and stacked neatly upon the desk, along with blueprints and books. The fox lead him through the room and into another hallway. Each door had a clear window next to it, revealing clean and proper surgical rooms. Yikes. The Lynx looked at each one in dismay. It all looked like torture, cha torture and chambers, just like the ones back in the prison. Don't worry. This won't hurt much. This won't hurt a bit. The doctor is an expert at what he does. Yeah, knowing Ma, um, yeah, you best take her word on this. She spoke in a monotone manner as she continued to walk through the slender hall. She stopped at a room marked as Cyber 7 and knocked on the window as if she was trying to get someone's attention. Lightning came over to see some type of black and yellow striped tiger. Ah, it's Ma! Yes! Yes! The Sebastian Michaelis here! <laughs> I'm sorry. But seriously, Ma looks like he could be in Black Butler. Just saying. With a me strange mechanical jaw. He wore a white long sleeve shirt and long black pants with a matching vest to go with it. The Lynx felt a disturbing, a disturbing feeling wash over him as his violet eyes met with his. The fact that his demeanor expressed this sick sense of twisted glee with a vial of common dignity. Yeah, Ma basically has that. He's strange, but he can't get the job done. To be honest, who would you trust more, the thylacine or Dr. Eggman when it comes to, well, experimenting on you? Uh, pretty much answer in the comments below so that I can know what you guys feel about it. Something 
the lynx wasn't looking forward to. The feline walked over to the mechanical door and opened it for the two to enter. The fox did not hesitate to enter as the lynx slowly followed behind. Good evening, Ma. Apologies for your abrupt call. You know the doctor always wants it done immediately. The fox bowed her head in respect to the being referred to as Ma as he walked over to the medical cart. There is no need to apologize, Danny. Protocol is protocol. He said with a calm, settling tone as he started to wipe a scalpel with a piece of cloth. And I do take great pride in, in that protocol. A small smile stretched upon his metal muzzle. I'll leave it to you then. See you in the morning. The fox waited and leave the room without another word as the door locked behind them. Lightning felt his body grow tight as the sound of the slamming door locking ranged through his ears. He couldn't even breathe for a brief moment until he heard the voice of the male behind him. Now then, shall we begin? How's my ma voice, guys? i like to know how you think, because honestly, I think it's pretty good. Sure, I can't do the Sebastian Michaela's voice, but eh, it's kind of close. The Lynx slowly turned around to face Ma. If this was going to be anything like the torment back in the prison, there was no way he was going to endure another session. Ma snapped his fingers to grab the Lynx's attention and pointed to the medical table behind him. Lightning knew what he was asking. This was just like how it was back in the prison. He slowly walked over to the table and, and cautiously laid back. I guess Lightning can understand body proportions and, and signals, rather than no words to be explained. So yeah. Good on ya. The striped feline walked over to a corner to grab an oxygen mask and a small tank. Just relax and answer the questions and you'll be okay. I promise this won't hurt a bit. He attached the tank to the medical machine and started to hook up the mask to the tube. Just take deep breaths. This will numb you. Ma applied the mask to the lynx's face and strapped it on tight. Well, at least Ma is being a little more, well, careful in what he's doing. Because you know, he's one heck of a thylacine. I am certainly one heck of a thylacine. Just saying. <laughs> oh boy. Lightning refused to breathe, thinking it was a po it was a type of poisonous gas. Not lethal, but something strong enough to torment his lungs. Oh man, poor lightning. Feel free to ask me any questions if it will help ease your mind. Ma stated calmly as he came over to the table with a marker. He noticed the lack of oxygen and rolled his eyes. Oh my god, it's this word again. Just a moment, guys. Alright guys, I got it. It's only anesthetics, you moron. You can breathe it in. The lynx looked at him in denial. Ma would wait until he took a few breaths and so the medical, like the medicine could start flowing into his system. The lynx wanted to rip off the mask, wanted to rip the mask off of his muzzle, but something was keeping him from doing so. Almost like his limbs were locked in place. Ah, oh, that must be the other effect kicking in. But his arms weren't strapped. He just couldn't budge. Lightning felt his lungs screaming for oxygen. He couldn't hold on for much longer. He released the carbon dioxide from his lungs and started, started gasping for air. 
Ah, oh, man, this poor lightning. He's just so panicked. I mean, I, you can't help but feel bad for him. Then again, in the comments, you feel bad for him, too. Let's just say he's been given a better purpose this time around. There you go. Nothing wrong with it, right? The Lynx settled after a few minutes of heavy breathing. No pain with, was present. He wasn't lying, after all. Yeah, Mom may be serious, but, that, but he isn't going to kill anyone. But he doesn't kill anyone. So, yeah, I I pretty much wouldn't mind getting a surgeon from him. I mean, he is an expert at this, after all. But what was to come was still a mystery. Well, that is Ma for ya. Ma then started to ex examine and strap the links on the, to the table. Lydon needed to ease his nerves, something to give him a brief moment of peace. Just one little distraction. What are you? The striped tiger didn't look at him, only continued his work. A creature known as a thylacine. Lightning pondered at his answer. I'm probably one of the last pure breeds in this world. It's a bit of a shame. Ah, Ma. Don't feel bad. I mean, you probably have a lot of time on your hands. You probably could make a cloning device. That way, you can use your DNA and pretty much make more thylacines. What? Did no one in Archie or any other media ever thought of that? I know it's a stretch, but hey, if Jurassic Park can do that, so why can't, I don't know, Ma? It only makes sense. He started to form dotted lines upon the Link's ears and left eye. Tell me, how good is your hearing and vision? The Lynx slowly spoke up. I have clear vision and a hearing range up to half a mile tops. Interesting. Seems your sensory functions are at its finest, but I can make that better. The thylacine said as he started to examine his upper body. His gloves had slowly gl gliding across his fur. The lynx was a bit uncomfortable as he started to reach to his abdomen. It's pretty much uh, just dotting and all that. Not bad. Your physical strength is better than the average male lynx. Well, he is supposed to be the strongest warrior of the Raiju clan. That makes a lot of sense. That gives me additional time to work on the other enhancements. Lightning felt his body tense up as he reached down to his knee. Hmm. Do you know your average and top speed on foot? N no. The thylacine looked at him with a s slight Eric expression. I don't know what that means. I'll just suck it up. I'm not going to do anything like that to you. Ma, you definitely have... Standards. Thank you. Sure, Ma may be that. You know, he may be questionable, but he's not pretty much the type to be taking advantage of you like that. He's got more standards. He's a gentleman for pretty much obvious reasons, which is why I like him. Ma continued to dot lines on the certain parts of his limbs and body. Have any medical conditions, aller allergic reactions, or possible addictions? No. The thylacine nodded, making mental notes. Where are you from? Had any prior experience that led you down this path? The lynx stayed silent. He didn't want to talk about it. Eurasia. That's all I'll say. Okay, then. Ma didn't push the subject any further and continued in silence. After 20 minutes, Lightning could slowly feel his head spinning and his vision blurring. 
Hey, can you hear me clearly? Yeah, the uh, lines are, yeah, here. They're pretty much showing the fact that Lightning, he's starting to uh, lose consciousness. The Lanes tried to shake the, his head to clear his senses to understand what the thylacine said, but it did nothing to help. How many fingers am I holding? Ma answered, raising three fingers in the Lynx's line of vision. The Lynx couldn't even respond to his question. Ma could tell that his vision was starting to cloud. It was time to get to work. Seems that you have you are becoming under the influence of the end. Don't worry. Close your eyes and it will be all right. Ma placed a cloth over the lynx's eyes as lightning's vision went completely dark and his body w went numb. The thylacine grinned and grabbed the scalpel from the cart and began cutting along the dotted lines one by one with persistence. Oh my god, I'm getting the images of cupcakes! But Ma isn't even doing that. I don't know why, but this gave me the I this gave me thinking of cupcakes. Oh my god, wouldn't that be a darker twist? But nope. We aren't killing lightning. We aren't killing him. Please? Lightning was in and out, but he couldn't feel or see a single thing. He could only hear certain sounds. The sound of drilling, the crackle of bone, the cutting of flesh, metal clanging against metal, and a heart monitor. There was a brief moment where he could see, but only for a brief moment. It was a bright light along with a black out figure, placing something in his eye. It faded after the figure installed the device. The rest was nothing but an empty blank space. And that is the end of chapter one, guys. And let's just say definitely a lot. I mean, there was action. There was suspense. There was pretty much. Yeah, that was definitely a good sign. And definitely what I pretty much would have expected. And not pretty much expected less from Danny. Seriously. <laughs> Anyways, what I basically stated before. Oh boy. Yeah, I pretty much started liking Lightning after pretty much what I basically learned about him. I was like, oh man, I feel sorry for this guy. I mean, he went through all this trouble and all he wanted to do was just return home. Dang you, Khan! You coward, bird monkey of a so-called king! Seriously, if Sonic didn't get involved, Monkey Khan would have at least fought Lightning to show that he at least could fight, because we didn't see him fight before, and Lightning would have won. And he was determined, too. And, of course, that would have been a step up, and he would actually have a future with Conquering Storm. Just saying. But the fact that he's being recurrent as an egg boss now, that's a chance that he's going to get a gooder future. Or, better future. Blech. And let's just say, I'm at least glad that he's given this chance. So yeah, Danny, thanks for pretty much bringing him into the series. It's definitely awesome. And, well, I hope you all enjoyed this. Hopefully we'll see exact, we'll get to see what happens with Lightning later on. But for now, we best pretty much leave it up to the viewers to know what's going to happen. So, yeah. Bye, everyone. 